Ha! <sighs> One whole year. To think it's been a whole year since I started all of this. I am Tomato Ghost. Cheaters always prosper, kids. Don't let anyone tell you different. Cheaters, Eggman! Packing heat! 64! Shame none of my games are here or else I've reviewed something. Oh well, I tried. You know, there's nothing to be said about try. Ing. Well, I could always re-review this one for old time's sake. Oh yeah, that's where sequels come from. Sorry about that. <laughs> Still warm. Anyway, we might as well review the sequel to Sonic Riders. Sonic Riders Zero Gravity. Is it better than the original? Is it worse? It's a Sonic game from the 2000s, so only I really care. Yeah! So before we even get to the menu, the opening cutscene plays to set up the story. Instead of the usual Sonic locale, this one takes place in... freaking Midgar, as a strange meteor crashes in the middle of the city. Sonic, Tails and Knuckles find said meteor and have no idea what it does. All they know is that it sets off all the robots in the area and, after a brush with death, Sonic learns it's a device to control gravity. <laughs> yeah! Oh, and I mean brush with death. Sonic really thought he was going to die! Also, it's weird seeing Knuckles glide in a cutscene. Once we hit the menu, we learn that the narrative is split into two stories like the first game, which I love, so I'm all for that. Well, since the Babylon story is locked again, we better start with the hero side, which begins... with the exact same cutscene. Recycled! That's the word I'm looking for! Following that, we enter our first race, with Sonic diving in for great continuity. And the gameplay begins. Right from the start, I can say that Zero Gravity is nowhere near as fast as the first game. This would be a turn-off, but speed comes as a reward for playing well, rather than being a necessity to just boost through tracks. In addition, control becomes much more manageable. Speaking of control... I don't need that, because I can use this. Thank you, SEGA! A phrase I've never used before and probably never will again. So the story continues, and instead of puking at the shift between FMV and in-game cutscenes like last time, I'm actually impressed because they've really stepped up the presentation this time around. Sure, the FMVs still look mmm godlike, but the cutscenes aren't too bad either. I guess the console jump really shows. Oh, both games were on PS2? Wow. While chasing down the rogue robots, Amy joins the fray, so naturally the player uses Tails next. About as natural as a two-tailed fox. As the race goes on, I'm taking notice of just how good the soundtrack is. I say that whoever was the music designer was a fucking genius. Sonic games tend to have great scores, however Zero Gravity does something different. Every time you control gravity, a new layer of music is added to the soundtrack and it's really bloody effective. Man, that's good! Hell, if you search menu music into YouTube, it's one of the first ones that comes up. And speaking of music, there's also the main theme of the game, which means it's time for... The theme song, Ungravitified by Cashel, is hands down my favourite Sonic song. That's right! I love it more than Live and Learn, Open Your Heart, I Am All Of Me, and even fucking Toot Toot Sonic Warrior! I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. Yes, I totally did. Every time that song starts, I just want to fucking punch the air! So the gang breaks into the Meteor Tech facility where the robots are coming from. Inside, they encounter... It's been a while, Sonic the Hedgehog. Jet? To tell you the truth, I'm actually really happy to see the rogues again. <laughs> Jet, despite having a hilarious voice, <gasps> is actually one of the more decent Sonic characters as he has a motive, personality, quirks, and a variety of moments that set him apart from lesser characters. <laughs> Also, his theme song is fucking good! No 
so Jet also has a gravity bracelet which leads us to the next race inside the factory. Quite similar to Egg Factory, but I'll let that slide because the course, and the other ones too, is built around the game's core mechanic of gravity control. Sonic Team knew they had a gimmick, yet they built the game around it rather than try to force it in. In fact, the gravity control in general is brilliant and really satisfying to use. The two ways you can use gravity is to either thrust yourself in the air to boost up the track, bouncing off objects to make yourself faster and maintain flight. The other is by hovering in place and shooting off in a new direction. This is essential for sharp turns which backs up my idea of having the game built around it. Courses are more varied with different layers and paths to take, not just depending on character but also how you use gravity. It's just... Oh, so smart! Both teams make it to the heart of the factory where they learn that Eggman owns Meteor Tech. Oh really? The company responsible for creating robots that are now on a rampage is owned by Eggman. What a shock! Not even I know why they've gone amok. Well that shut me up. We are also given context of the ringleader behind the rampage. The first robot who activated known as SCRHD. Or SCUD. And also Eggman explains what the gravity controller thingies are. Huh? Shut up and listen. That and they left Amy behind. And no one gives a shit about Storm. Sorry, man. So when the trio track down Amy, all they find is a blown up robot with no Storm in sight. Where was it he said? Ge Giga something like that. Wait, Gigan. The Gigan rocks. You know it, Knuckles? Even I'm amazed. Knuckles was useful? Holy shit. Get on you, man. Nobody's made it back alive yet. We'll be risking our necks. Yeah! Always the optimist. Or just stupid. This leads us to Geigen Rocks, which is a pretty damn fun level for no other reason than building up speed on the slope is incredibly satisfying. Since we've had enough time to play as different characters, I should note that a feature returning from the original is the character types. Again, characters are split into three types, either speed, flight or power, however this time you have to earn their perks. Collecting rings throughout the race will level up your EXTREME GEAR and change the gear depending on your character. I actually prefer this method because it encourages ring collection and makes item boxes actually useful unlike the first game. Although saying that, most of the items are actually a hindrance. Bastards. The gang wind up in Skyrim where they find a mural revealing that Babylon Garden is connected to the bracelets, called Ark of the Cosmos, and that Jet and Eggman are headed for the remaining bracelets. Now say what you want about Sonic's storylines, but I'm actually invested in this. It builds a legitimately good mystery about the origin of the bracelets and their ties to the Babylon Rogues and the previous game. It all, just, it all just, it all just comes together like a nice package. The heroes follow them and... Oh, this fucking song! Sorry, I'll be good. And now it's time for the final race, which is just a great course. It encourages strong gravity control, so it's a true test of what the player has learned over the course of the game and... I don't know, the way Sonic says Yahoo is adorable. <laughs> also, I just have to reiterate that seriously, the sound designer is a genius. God, the music building is fantastic! So it turns out Eggman was behind everything. Well, I feel like a fucking idiot. And reveals Babylon Garden has risen again with all the arcs together. Here. Hey! We haven't settled anything yet! See you at the World Grand Prix! Ha <laughs> ha! What? No, seriously. What? This is irrelevant! And it came out of nowhere! And it just ends there! What? And with that... The hero story is over and we're treated to some really nice credits actually. It's in black and white, clearly going for an arty look, and the background and effects look cool. Also the music! <laughs> Must resist! Babylon story now! Their story begins at Geigen Rocks where we see Jet Indiana Jones' way to getting an Ark of the Cosmos. Look, a shooting star! Alright star, give me the power to beat it! I actually like this scene because it just allows for quieter moments in this quirky Sonic game, as well as establishing Jet's motivation. Oh, never mind. Looks like my wish came true already! <laughs> well, the gameplay is exactly the same as the rest of the game, so not much to comment there. But I will address that the rogues race through alternate versions of existing tracks that, honestly, I prefer. These tracks are a bit more gravity reliant and just seem more challenging. The Rogue storyline reveals a lot more about the Ark's background where we learn it's a piece of the engine for Babylon Gardens, explaining how it flew in the first place. Boss! Ha! Not this time, creepy face! The Babylonian scrolls say there are five Arcs of the Cosmos. Storm! 
set a course for Megalo Station at full throttle. Roger that, boss. Ha! Huh, these things really do attract one another. So with Storm being sent after Skrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
Hell, even Skrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr